Hi, my name is Sarah Robinson. I live all the way in Cincinnati, Ohio. I have three kids and I'm married to a wonderful man named Jake. And I host a podcast called Cultivate Hope. You can find it on Apple Podcast or Spotify Podcast. It is my labor of love. It is my way of doing what very much what Make Me Available is doing on this platform where I'm trying to speak hope into the lives of people where they may be in a season of hopelessness or they may not see a way out because I've been there. Four years ago, four and a half years ago now, I was diagnosed with something called ulcerative colitis. It's an autoimmune and if you're more familiar with Crohn's, it's like the sister to that. But I was diagnosed with that four and a half years ago, right after I'd had a miscarriage, my first miscarriage. Later, I would go on to have a second one and it was all within about four months of each other. It was like back to back to back. It felt like labor pains. I didn't have a moment to breathe. I didn't have a second between these huge life altering moments. And I just felt like I was in this pit I could not climb out of on my own. And so that's when the Lord started to speak to me as I started to kind of figure out my footing with how I wanted my physical healing journey to look. I also started to hear the Lord speak into how my spiritual healing was going to look. And it wasn't anything that I would have expected. It wasn't anything like I would have known how to walk out on my own. The Lord had to really lead me and take my hand and guide me down this road. So I want to encourage you today that if you're in a place of hopelessness or despair or discouragement or disappointment, you don't have to stay there and you don't have to pull yourself out because God promises that he will meet us in those places. He says that he will come 90%. All we have to do is just say yes. He will come so close. He's closer than a brother. He's closer than a friend. And that's what I experienced of the Lord. And I want to tell you that he's faithful to be everything he said he would. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is Jehovah Shalom. He is everything that he says he is. So when I was in this place of trying to figure out where the Lord was leading me in my spiritual healing journey as my body was physically trying to heal, I felt the Lord say, you need to change your language. And that's one thing I want to encourage you in today is if you're going through something where there is either disappointment, discouragement, destruction, um, distraction, anything spoken over your life that is not in the language of God or the language of heaven, you do not have to succumb to that. You do not have to follow suit. Your language can be different. And it starts with our language because think about how the earth started, how creation started. It started with the language of heaven. The language of heaven was, let this be, let this be. It was all an agreement. Everything that came to be was an agreement with what the Lord said. And when we have the Holy Spirit, we're able to use the language of heaven to change the atmosphere of our situation, to change the atmosphere of whatever season of hopelessness we're in. So for me, Four years ago when I was diagnosed with UC, people would say, oh, you have this. Or doctors would say, this is chronic. You have UC, you need to get used to it. And I said, absolutely not. That is, chronic is not in my Lord's vocabulary. It's not in my Bible and it's not gonna be in my mouth. I was diagnosed with something, it is not mine. Once I accept possession of that, I am essentially in the spiritual realm agreeing with what was spoken over me. And those agreements have power. Anything that I agree with in the spirit realm has physical ramifications and it can tie me to something that's not meant to be mine, that the, the Lord freed me from on the cross. So I believe that when Jesus died, it says he died for our forgiveness. He died for our iniquity, our shame and every disease. He conquered death, he conquered our sickness. So for me, I have to believe what I know to be true in scripture over what I see, because if not, I'm flipping it and I'm walking by sight and not by faith. So I wanna encourage you guys today to walk by faith and not by sight. Don't let what you see that may not look like what the Bible says, define your faith. Your faith needs to trump what you see and it needs to define how you walk in life and how you proclaim victory. So for me, I say I wasn't diagnosed or I wasn't given this, I was diagnosed with it. So I was told that I have this, but I know the truth and it's that I'm a conqueror, I'm an overcomer, I have victory on the cross that was already won for me. I get to see Christ rightly through my suffering. And that's something that 
we only get to give him on earth. There is no suffering in heaven. There is no sickness in heaven. There is no shame, no pain, no crying. But here on earth, because we live in a world that is broken by sin, that is broken and hurting and waiting to be redeemed, we who have already been redeemed have to sometimes sit in those spaces and wrestle with that. And we're gonna have things that affect us while we're here. So it is so important that we use the language of heaven to change the atmosphere and to use the language of heaven to lead us into a place of hope. So I have a podcast called Cultivate Hope and that's what we do. There is an episode for every single season of hopelessness you might find yourself in. And that's the goal. We're gonna continue to make more episodes, even more that have already been made of things like we already have hope in the midst of um, divorce, hope in the midst of suffering, hope in the midst of religion, hope in the midst of identity crisis. We have so many different seasons of hopelessness scattered throughout the brokenness of this world where we need to start cultivating hope, actually taking initiative and digging, not for the stories that are common, not for the stories we hear about where you know, this person was suffering and they didn't get better and it lasted forever. I can look at a million of those stories. There are so many people out there with UC that have had it for 20 plus years. I've had it for four. And you know what? I don't ever go into a year thinking I'm going to have this for another year. Every year I go into it declaring that this is the year it goes away, that this is the day. Every morning I wake up, this is the day that this is going to end. And you know what? I don't know God's plan. His timing is perfect. It's his will and not my will. But I do know that his will is for me to be healed because his will was declared on the cross when he overcame all sickness, disease, death, shame, iniquity, all of that so that I can live righteously, so that I can live completely healed and pure in Christ Jesus. So I wanna encourage you today that if that's you, if you're in a season of hopelessness, you can lean in to the hope of Jesus Christ and the hope that was already given to you on the cross. You just have to speak it into your life, speak it over your circumstance and know that he is gonna show up and that this isn't the end. And if it's not good, it's not done. He's not done with us. It says he's doing a consistent work in us until the day that we are fully finished and completed. Until the day it is done, he is doing the work in us. So if it doesn't feel good, if it isn't good, if it's not done, He's not done working and there's more that he has for you. So lean into that, lean into his presence over everything else. His presence is much better than anything he can give us. And it's in his presence that we're healed. So I just wanna encourage you today to lean into the hope of Jesus Christ, declare your healing and sit in his presence. Thank you make me available for having me today. I'm just so thankful to be able to share a piece of hope with all of you. Have a great rest of your day.